Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So we're here in the new shop um, and uh, what I'm doing right now in preparation for uh, the insulation, um, I had uh, the guy come out and he measured it up uh, to give me a proper estimate on uh, spray urethane insulation on the inside. Um, I want to put a few more lights up um, to just to make it easier to work in here uh, you know, while I'm moving things around and whatnot. So one of my, a friend of mine and a viewer, uh, Kevin Alexander, he, uh, he donated some, um, some LED lights to the cause. Uh, he said, I'm giving you the gift of light, which was great. Um, what these are, these are eight foot uh, LED shop fixtures. They're 6,000 Kelvin uh, color temperature and um, I can't remember how many watts they are, but they're pretty intense. Um, I'll point it at the uh, at one of them right now. Anyway, you can daisy chain these together. Um, eight of them is 180 bucks or something like that. So they're pretty cheap uh, and they're quite intense. Uh, I wouldn't recommend these for a low ceiling. These need to be up in the 10 foot range, something like that. Uh, otherwise, they're too uh, they're too harsh. Uh, but they do put out a lot of light and they're really easy to mount. Show you the clips here. So here's a light array, and they're they're kind of a they're kind of a V array, right? But they weigh almost nothing here. You know, that's not even a pound. Okay, I've had hamburgers that weigh more than that. And then they give you some little clips here. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm just shooting those into the with a self-tapping screw, the clips, and then these just snap into this extrusion here, which is pretty nice. They're pretty easy to mount. Then they have. Uh, so you can put them uh, nose to tail here with these little connectors. Then it has a four foot um, extension that plugs in. Uh, so you can have four feet between them. And then it has a hard wire uh, insert and then a plug in insert with a switch. So all that for less than 200 bucks, which I thought was a uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty screaming deal. So anyway, we're putting some of these up and uh, um, just to give us a little more light while we're uh, horsing around in here, uh, moving things around. So there's one near the front door that I just leaned up and plugged in over there. It was a convenient plug. And you can see that's pretty intense, although the, uh, the camera's probably uh, adjusting the exposure for that too. So, uh, and I have some straight up overhead too that, uh, that we're using. And there's the overhead ones that I already put up and these basically transform the place um, and then you see I got this uh, one of these old school uh, mercury vapor lamps here that's coming out there's two of those in the high bay here um, those are coming out and I'm gonna put I believe it's a 250 watt dimmable LED fixture in there uh, now that's 19 feet up so my ladder doesn't quite reach so I haven't quite sorted out uh, what uh, <laughs> sketchy method I'm going to use to get up there uh, to uh, take those fixtures out and put the uh, put the hang the new LED fixtures they're they're kind of a direct swap out so it should be minimal work up there but uh, just getting up to the 20 foot level is uh, um, slightly sketchoid okay so I got some uh, some more lights hung these uh, LED strip lights um, so I hung uh, four more I, I wired a little plug up there because uh, that was just the simplest way to uh, get these plugged in and it's really giving me quite a bit of light uh, where I didn't have it before. So I'm going to order some more of these I think and uh, do them on the opposite side over here where we're standing um, and get rid of the... I'm not having any fluorescent fixtures in here anymore. I'm just tired of dealing with ballasts and bulbs and and all that stuff it's just a, a pain in the neck so and then I've been noodling how to uh, to deal with these uh, high bay fixtures here too how to get up to that uh, 20 foot level up there so <laughs> and not kill myself all right all right so we're just gonna rough place uh, the welding machine um, it's going in that opening there uh, main power is going to come down that column right there to it uh, which makes the conduit run pretty easy short it's just going to come over the top it's big wire so I want it a little bit close to the uh, to 
to the panel, you know, not to all the way across the shop. The beast. This is not your uh, lightly inverter type welder. <laughs> this, is, this is just a, a rough placement. Just to get things kind of where they're going to go. So, uh, get a feel for uh, what the shop's going to be like, right? A little further. See the big conductors here. This is a, a power hog here, and yeah, it works. Power down there. It comes in the back corner. Uh, welding cable is going to be in this area here. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be long ways or long ways here or kind of out. Not sure yet. All the grinding equipment's back in there. Sort of where it's going to go. Been thinking about the arbor press. So, uh, and where that goes, so. Oh, this is the arbor press here. And you need a little bit of height because of the handle. And then you need a, yeah, a little bit of room around it, not a lot. But it, it's skinny, so it'll go in a, in a spot kind of like what's next to the welder there. So, in fact, that might not be a bad spot there. So, uh, maybe we'll try it there. I did a little bit of work over here too. Um, this this lathe is about where it's going to be, um, and the mill is going to be. I like I like uh, mills in the corner like that myself. They they seem to work out pretty good that way. Um, and these purlets here that run along the wall, the, these beams. Uh, in this case, they're actually an excellent shelf uh, for putting stuff on, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, so anyway, that's going to be there, and the, the Monarch Double E is going to go at the same angle as this, parallel, but uh, kind of in that slot. Now, i, I got to try that, okay, because the mill might be a little bit too close to that. Not sure. We'll see what, uh, what it feels like when I get that machine here. It's in San Jose right now. I just haven't been able to pick it up. I can move the mill around the corner a little bit more, too, if I want to. Um, and Oh yeah, a lot of these things, you know, you got to kind of, it's, it's, it's fine and dandy to do a layout, you know, but you, you really got to, you got to live with it, right, you know. Um, like, I'm feeling like this space here might just be a little too small, but it, it isn't much. I mean, we're really talking about a couple of inches that make it go from, um, um, you know, unworkable to excellent, right. And, you know, I've talked to race car drivers and they say, the difference between going fast and going slow in a race car sometimes is a quarter, quarter or a half an inch, you know, between some control, the shifter and the wall, and uh, you know where the brake pedals are and things like that. Um, so these things matter, and you got to kind of try them. Um, so it's good to do planning and rough layouts, but you really need to walk through the spaces and and swing your arms like you're walking through the shop and uh, you know, see what you catch on. So <laughs> at least that's how I do it. <laughs> So next up on the project list here too, you know, I mean, I ordered some stuff from uh, from McMaster, is to mount this uh, uh, this backsplash on this lathe. Um, previously in the old shop, I had a there was a part of the building that was right here, and it was very convenient to to mount that uh, on. I don't have that anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I ordered some. Uh, some bolt-on brackets and we'll drill and tap a couple of holes in the lathe come up with some unistrut here to support this and then the, the rest of the unistrut strut structure that holds the the tooling blocks and uh, the over the the task light that goes over the top of this will come off of that so anyway that's kind of the next project that's coming up here and uh, we'll go through that uh, that'll be on the, the next installment of uh, I don't know putting the shop back together, right? So, uh, anyway. So, a little pro tip. Whatever you build, make sure
sure it's either on wheels or that you can catch it with a pallet jack. Um, the older I get, the more I gotta think about uh, uh, material handling problems, right? So this is, you know, sure I could wrestle this, but uh, why, right? <laughs> Now, if I had this to do over again, I probably would have made that base a little wider, but it works. So, right, so there's, I don't know, 500 pounds or whatever it is. I'm just going to plug it into where I think it'll go nicely. Okay, so that's about it for this uh, quick video here, a little update, uh, things that are going on in the shop. And um, anyway, uh, thank you all for uh, your viewership and your support. I really appreciate it. And uh, those of you that uh, uh, have not gotten an Epic Egress t-shirt, they're still available um, through, um, uh, there's a link in the, uh, in the description and you can uh, order up a, a t-shirt and uh, support the channel. Uh, and if you don't feel like it, don't worry about it. My content will always be free. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And see you guys next week.